Good afternoon, and welcome to a virtual night with Shakespeare performed by the Bishop Lachlan Drama Club. Although we would rather be in the BLMHS Auditorium, we are reminded by Shakespeare himself that all the world is a stage. And it is with this mindset that we begin our performance. My name is Marquise Ellis, and I will be your guide through the different plays of Shakespeare you will see tonight beginning with my performance of Shakespeare's Sonnet 15, When I Consider Everything That Grows. When I consider everything that grows, pulls in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth not but shows, for on the stars and secret influence comment, when I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked even by the self-same sky, vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, and wear their brave state out of memory. Then the conceit of this inconsistent stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to slowly night, and all in war with time for love of you. As he takes from you, I am grafting you. Thank you. So next we have Emmanuel Benimer and Lauren Stewart performing the title characters from the well-known play, Romeo and Juliet. Take it away. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more feared than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it, cast it off. It is my lady, oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heavens, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spirits till they return. Whatever eyes were there, they are in her head. The brightness of her cheek will shame those stars, as daylight doth the lamp, her eyes in heaven. But through the airy region streams so bright, that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I may touch that cheek. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou will not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It's nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other name, would, be, would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. Retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo doth thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. Thank you, Emmanuel and Lauren. I really hope it works out for them in the end. <laughs> Next, we have Nyla Sherls and her performance of Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, as summer's lease has all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. 
and every fear from fear, sometime the cry, by chance, when nature's changing course unchain. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession in fair vows, nor shall death drag thou wanderest in the shade. When an eternal line to time grows, so long as man can breathe, and eyes can see, so long live this, and this give light to thee. Thank you, Nyla. Speaking of summer, we have Jocelyn Serrano Atienza and her performance of Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, spite. Oh, hell. I see you all are bent. Oh, spite. Oh, hell. I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do? For you must join in souls to mock me too. If you are men as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and super praise my part when I'm so you hate me with your hearts. You are both rivals and love Hermia and now both rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit a manly enterprise to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. None of noble soul was so offend the virgin and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. What a bewitching performance. Next, here we have Hani Echeverria performing Shakespeare's Sonnet 130. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips is red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet by heaven I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Thank you. That's on the ticket. Next, we have Rose Walsh portraying Phoebe and Jonna Lynch portraying Rosalind from the play As You Like It. Think not I love him, though I ask for him. Tis but a peevish boy, yet he talks so well. But look your eye for words. Yet words do well when he that speaks them pleases those who hear. It is a pretty youth, not very pretty, but sure. He's proud, and yet his pride becomes him. He'll make a proper man. The best thing in him is his complexion, and faster than he, his tongue make offense, his eyes did heal it up. He is not very tall, but for his years, he is tall. His leg is but so-so, and yet to swell. There was a pretty redness in his lips, a little riper or more lusty than those that mixed in his cheek. Twas just the difference between the constant red and mingled damask. There be some women, Sylvius, had they marked him in parcels as I did, would have gone near to fall in love with him. But for my part, I love him not, nor hate him not. And yet, I have more cause to hate him than to love him. For what did he do to chide at me? He said mine eyes were black and my hair black, and now I am remembered scorned at me. I marvel why I answered not again. But that all is one, omnidence is not quittance. I'll write to him a very tainting letter, and now shall bear it, wilt thou, Silius?
It is not the fashion to see the lady in the epilogue, but it is no more unhandsome than to see the lord in the prologue. If it's true that good wine needs good bush, it is true that the good play needs no epilogue. Yet, to good wine, they do use good bushes, and good plays through the better by the help of good epilogues. What a case am I, then? And neither a good epilogue nor can insinuate you in the behalf of a good play. I am not furnished like a beggar, therefore to beg will not become me. My way is to conjure you, and I'll begin with the women. I charge you, O oh women, but a love you bear to men, to like as much as this play as please me. And I charge you, O oh men, but a love you bear to women, as I perceive by your simpering, none of you hate them. But between you and the women, the play may please. If I were a woman, I would kiss as many of you had beards that pleased me, complexions that liked me, and breaths that I defied not. And I am sure, as of many of you have good beards and good faces, or sweet breaths will for my kind offer, when I make curtsy, bid me farewell. <laughs> if we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, nothing no more yielding, but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. And that is, that is the end of our performance. Um, hope you enjoyed everything. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and also, uh, Marquise, I believe you have a speech you would like to say. Yes. Um, uh, just real quick. Um, hi. Hello. Yes, I shaved my head. <laughs> um, but um, just very quick thank you to Mr. Johnson and Mr. Frank for organizing this night of Shakespeare. I really enjoyed putting this setup uh, and costumes together, and I'm certain that my fellow castmates enjoyed the experience as well. With all of that being said, I would be lying if I said that I could go on with finishing this without mentioning everything that's been happening, not even in this country, but in the entire world now. Where we are right now, is because of May 25th, 2020. The murderous act that was done by Derek Chauvin when he kneeled in the neck of George Floyd as he kept repeating, I can't breathe. However, as we should all know by now, that's not where it started. On August 2014, Michelle Cousseau was fatally shot while being taken to a psychiatric facility. Once again, this is not where any of this started. On February 26th, 2012, Trayvon Benjamin Martin was walking home with a pack of Skittles when he was fatally shot by George Zimmerman. Still, however, this was not the start of it all. From Breonna Taylor, to Philip White, to Tamir Rice, Alteria Woods, Tony McDade, Ahmaud Aubrey, the list unfortunately goes on and on and on. We live in a world where we don't feel protected and justice is almost never served properly. We live in a world where blood spills more than tears do. We live in a world where I have to slouch in my father's car because I'm scared that when an NYPD vehicle drives by, an officer will take my life away. We live in a world where I and many other Black folk could experience racism while others have the privilege of simply learning about it. We live in a world, in a country, under a system plagued by bigotry and racism. Because of that, too many Black lives were lost because of a system where its promise was to protect and serve, to deliver life 
liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With credit to Mr. Callahan and Mr. Fortune, I realized that this system was never made to benefit us in the first place. It is now our time to dismantle it and rebuild it again. However, in order to get there, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And it starts with white people to simply recognize their privilege and using it to speak up. As little as the platform may be, all it takes is educating yourself. For the past week or so, social media has become a public hub of resources and news, stuff that not even televised news shows you. If I see on the news that they show a clip of a police car on one side and protesters on the other, and the car is slowly driving forward and then cut, that's all they show. But then I go on Instagram and I see, and I see that the car actually drove over protesters. No one, absolutely no one should be comfortable with that. Going back to my point in social media, it's become a central hub of news and resources for everyone to see, to catch up on recent updates, recent news, black owned small businesses, petitions to sign, places to donate, movies to watch, books to read, and guides to allyship. With that being said, one of the most important things spreading around the media are voting primary dates. It is so significant, not just for the adults, but for our young people to realize how our vote is so important now more than ever, because evidently we cannot survive another four years of inefficient administration and Cheeto Puff in office. He called people cowards and thugs for protesting and standing up for our human rights while he hid in the bunker. For any of the younger audience watching on Zoom right now, if you are like me and will be turning 18 before the upcoming election, we have to use our vote because it's needed now more than ever. Um, I provided a link. Um, Mr. Frank um, sent a link in the chat. Hopefully it's still there, but I provided a, li a link tree um, in the chat that hopefully, um, there it is right now. Um, the link tree has a lot of lists of a bunch of resources to educate yourself, sign petitions, make donations, and registering to vote. I know I felt this guilt, well, more so FOMO, fear of missing out, because I've had to stay home and miss out on all the action. And I used to feel so bad about it because I wasn't there to, you know, be a part of it, you know? Um, but it's resources like these that, that help. And it's, it's a part of what you can all do to help fight our fight as human beings. We as a human race need to come together understand our issues and find a way to actually make things right. Um, I would like to um, add in a little quote by one of my favorite profound writers, Janaya Khan. People protest because power never concedes power. People protest because policies and politicians have failed them over decades and generations. They risk life and limb because every other effort has been ignored by an uncaring and unmoving system. If you are more concerned with property than you are people, you have been indoctrinated by a system that doesn't care about you outside of what you can produce. People deserve dignity. They deserve life, security, safety. People deserve a chance. And if you can't get behind that, it's time to seriously think about what kind of person you are and what you plan to do here. Because this work, this protest work, it's the holiest of work that I know. Live in your purpose while you are alive. To finish it off, I'll leave you with this. Some are protesting on social media. Some are, sorry, some are posting on social media. Some are protesting in the streets. Some are donating silently. Some are educating themselves. Some are having tough conversations with friends and family. A revolution has many lanes. Be kind to yourself and to others who are traveling in the same direction. Just keep your foot on the gas. Um, thank you. Thank you, Marquise. Um, you, uh, I know that it's not easy to do this. Um, that was a wonderful speech from the first day of your freshman year. You, you stepped in and became a, a strong leader of the student body at Lachlan. And 
very proud of all the work that I was able to do with you over the last four years. And uh, actually, uh, this, um, I think Mr. Frank has a, a slideshow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have a little something for uh, our seniors. And, and um, I too have worked closely with Marquise over the past couple of years, not only in drama, but in the house system. And Marquise, you've been a wonderful leader. You led a wonderful Kairos this year. This tribute is to you and it's to all the seniors who've been with us on this journey uh, through the past four years. And um, we dedicate this segment to our seniors. I'm scared, oh God. Just bear with me one second. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, wow. I've gone without bread. I've slept in the mud. I've given my best while they scream for my blood. I've begged and I've bullied for any small chance to perform. And nights I've awakened my guts in a knot Remembering how much I gave up and for what Some paints and some costumes A pitiful tent in a storm A handful of coins A trunk always packed No family, no home Just this madness to act Still I have a theory About this disease we contract That most men are equally crazy as actors. In fact. Why does a boy carve his name on the tree? Or the firstborn inherits the throne? is a sculptor aspiring to be when he spends half his life carving stone kings build their tombs sons at least none i can claim and no patience for carving in stone all that i have are my skill and my name and this chance to make both Thank you, Mr. Frank. That was wonderful. Uh, you sent that to me earlier, but it, it, it still hits. It, it, it's very impactful seeing it again. Um, this senior class is 
uh, very close to me in a lot of different ways, but in one particular way, uh, Jana was a freshman in the very first musical that I ever directed, which was Annie. And now four years later, you know, when we, we have so many seniors that, that have come along the way, and we have seniors who joined in their senior year, uh, like Lauren, even though she probably should have been in from her freshman year because she's just that talented. <laughs> and we had some seniors who weren't able to perform with us, but they're still in the drama club with us. And I know nobody wanted the year to end like this. There's no way we could have seen it. it's coming, but I'm so happy that we got to at least do this today. And I thank you all for coming and I hope you share the same sentiments. Um, thank you. Good job, good job, you guys. So feel free if you wanna unmute yourselves at this time. Um, Great job. Do so. Great job, thank you for everything. And I wanna to introduce to you my latest performer, Robbie. Say hello to everybody. Throw <laughs> kiss, go ahead. That was wonderful. The um, I just want to say something. Uh, I'm not going to have too many more opportunities to say things. So uh, the level of this performance was magnificent. And um, both the seniors and all of those who, um, and Mr. Johnson, as well as Mr. Frank, you guys, it took, uh, it took me 42 years to get to this quality of performances. And I really have to say, I'm really happy because the people that we have um, are amazing. The, everybody from dance to drama, to, to music, to band, to the person replacing me, uh, Grace Brancali, just great people. So I wish you well. I will still be around to bother <laughs> people. <laughs> But in a oh, much great. different way, okay? But I will still be doing performing arts and helping out with shows and stuff. Whoops. And Robbie <laughs> just said I have to leave. So <laughs> I will talk to you later. But thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Great job, you guys. Great job. That's very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Marquise, thank you very much for the comments you made at the end. I very, very grateful for them. Thank you. Yeah. Very important right now. I just want to say I enjoyed it very much and that uh, you reminded me of how much I love Shakespeare. And now I know I want to reread so much of the uh, pieces that you did today because among them were my favorites. Uh, Marquise, you're very special. I told your mom that your contributions to Lachlan will stay with us for years and years to come. The whole senior uh, drama club has been extraordinary over the four years. The growth, the entertainment, You've brought so much life and spirit to our school, and we love you, and we will miss you dearly. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Legend. Yeah, you guys did an absolutely great job, and uh, just watching you guys perform, it just makes you sad. I miss you guys. You know, it's great to see <laughs> you guys do what you do and, you know, show your talents, so... And, you know, we are going to perform next year's musical, uh, the, the music Little Shop of Harvest that we were supposed to do this year. So, you know, we're definitely open for suggestions on how to get the seniors involved with that as well. And, of course, Mr. Frank and Mr. Johnson and myself and the whole staff will try to figure, we'll figure things out so that we can do something. I still, we still owe these seniors a spring show as well. And uh, we'll figure out how we do it, even if it's a year from now. Oh, well, if, if that's, that's everything, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and it was fabulous.